Welcome to the show. I'm thrilled to have with me today, back for the second time, the legend that is John Garrett. Good day to you, sir. Hey, thanks so much. I moved up to legend. Look at this. Well, we don't bring many people on twice, John, but we had such a fun conversation last time. For the benefit of listeners that haven't come across that interview, and we'll put a link to it in our show notes, just tell us a little bit about who you are and then what we spoke about. Sure. Yeah. No, it was it was great. And I it's an honor to be back, honestly. And and it, yeah, so I wrote a book called What's Your And? You're an accountant and something else. You know, what are those hobbies and passions and, and other dimensions to who you are? Basically, there's a job title and behind that job title is a human. And then even deeper inside that human is a soul. And what lights your soul up? And if you say more accounting, you're you're lying. Um, and you know, there's, there's other things too. You're good at your job. You like your job, but who else are you? And you're an award-winning comedian, a writer, but you are a CPA. You worked at PwC. I don't know if you keep your yeah. qualification current, but you understand no. what these professionals- Yeah, no one's asking me to sign through. anything. So I am not, <laughs> although when I'm on stage, I'm giving out plenty of CPE. Uh, when I'm speaking at sure. conferences, but uh, but yeah, I was a CPA, was with Big Four, uh, and then uh, yeah, had two Emmy nominations that I for award shows that I wrote, and the book has won three international awards. So yeah, it's, I can legit say it's good without uh, lying. No, so it's, it's no mistake therapy. to say you're on something of a mission, John, to create better workplaces. What does a Absolutely. good workplace look like in your view? Yeah, a good workplace is a, a place that values the worker as much as they value the work. So yeah, sure, we need these you know, statements done on time and we need the work done correctly and all that. But, but more than that, I want Rob to be doing that work. Like not just anybody, uh, but we need you know, this specific person to be doing it. And, uh, you know, and, and genuinely caring about the whole person because you hired the whole person. You didn't hire just the technical skills part of them. You hired all of them. And, and we only send people to CPE for their technical skills. And there's no CPE for life. Mm. Or, hey, we know that you really love cooking. How about we send you to a chef school for a couple of days and you go and do that? Or, you know, what are things that, that make sure that people are living their best life and then they're going to do their best work? But John, do we really hire people for the, the whole of them? We hire people to fill gaps and fulfill roles and deliver on certain yeah. aspects of the firm to make everything go right. Perhaps we should revisit that. Well, I mean, you do hire that, but what comes with it is the whole person. So, you know, like, you, yeah, you're not hiring someone maybe necessarily for that, but it's coming with it. So you might as well celebrate it and shine a light on it because that's the majority of who that human is, is not the work. Uh, now, hours wise, you spend more of the, that time around, uh, you know, at work and around those people. But who you are is, is so much greater than just, just your work. And so shine a light on that and celebrate that. If I lead, lead in a firm or I own a firm, I'm acutely aware of the talent problem, the yeah. dwindling labor pool. We spoke yeah. in the last episode, John, didn't we, about less and less people coming into accounting and the the dearth of professionals that will be created by the baby boomers moving on. Yeah. So we start to ask ourselves, how do we fill the gaps? How do we grow the firm? How do we increase headcount? How do we set up an employer brand that makes people want to come and work for our firm? Do you agree with me that most professional websites look exactly the same? Oh, totally. Terms. They have the same yeah. fonts, the same colors, the same promises, yeah. the same values. It's which shade of blue is your logo? Light yeah. blue or dark blue? Like, you know, what are you at here? You know, I, ironically enough, as my what's your and logo is also blue, um, but it's my favorite color. So that's how I went with it. But, uh, but yeah, it, I mean, if we were to scratch out the firm name, uh, is it any different? Uh, if I go to your profile uh, on your, on your page, your partner profiles, uh, honestly, what does it tell me? Does it tell me who you are? Or does it tell me a bunch of stuff that you've done? And of course you're good. You're a partner at a firm. Yeah, you know what you're doing. You don't have to tell me all of it. Tell me who you are. Like, let's see a picture of you outside of work. Let's see you as a human. Because, because you know who else is human? 
your coworkers and your clients. Mm -hmm. And and so if you're looking to have a place, you know, people are leaving, but they're going somewhere. And why don't they come to you? And and maybe a good start, honestly, if you're leading an organization, an accounting firm especially, is just because you're an accounting firm doesn't mean you have to act like one. Like stop. Maybe act like a, a tech startup. Maybe act like one of your clients. Maybe act like something that you want to be, want to actually be. And just because it's always been this way is not the reason to keep going that way. Mm. You know, the firm started 40 years ago and it's, yeah, well, a lot has changed and you're in charge now. So make it what you want it to be. Yeah. You know, actually put your thumbprint on, on this firm. We talked in the last episode about the importance of the individual differentiating themselves. That's great for the career. It's great for their own mental health and well-being, great yeah. for their own self-esteem. But equally, a firm has to differentiate itself in standing out as saying, we are an employer of choice. We are a place that will nurture talent, not just from a technical CPD, CPE perspective, but as the whole human yeah, a whole dimension of you and making you a better person. Speak to that a little bit, John. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's it's a, uh, it's like, you know, if a client is looking for services to be done, then uh, what differentiates you? And you're all using probably the same software. You all have the same education. You're going to the same CPE CPD classes. Uh, you're doing like what's different? Yeah, and it's the human side to you. Who are you? Who else are you? And, and I mean, it's really fun when I speak uh, at conferences, we'll create a word cloud uh, in real time <laughs> of people's ands. Like what's your outside of work hobby or passions? Put up to three in there. And we create this word cloud that's super cool. And I'm speaking at like an all staff event for a firm. And I'll say, this word cloud is who you are. What you do is audit and tax and accounting services and consulting and whatever it is. But who you are is that word cloud. No other organization in the world can have this exact word cloud. Mm -hmm. So lean in on that and shine a light on that because that's what makes you different. And if, if you have a bunch of people that love to go skiing, well, maybe you should go after some clients that are in the ski industry because you're going to know all the lingo. I think this, we talked about this last time too. You're going to, you're going to be able to relate to them. You're going to be, you know, super cool to them. They're going to be super cool to you. And uh, it's just a way to, to be like, well, we're not just accountants. We're accountants who also love to ski. So we know all about this. And so, you know, that human side to you is, is bring that out. And on your about us webpage uh, on your, on your website, like, I want to see some pictures of you volunteering in the community. I want to see some pictures of you doing things outside of work because that's about you. Now about you isn't, oh, we have uh, this many hours of technical skills and uh, yeah, who doesn't like, honestly, who doesn't, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's, you're not different. And so find out what makes you different and then lean in on that and double down on that. One of the biggest mistakes I see professional firms making on their about us page is it talks about the firm. These are our values. This is the way we nurture our people. We invest in our people. We coach them. We're big on professional development. We're big <laughs> on, but you're talking about them. You're not really talking about your people. You're not oh. embracing that diversity and you're not painting a picture of the people that are the uniqueness of that firm. Exactly. That's exactly it. And uh, one thing that I like to do with clients that I work with is do a, uh, an employee journey map. So how do we look at an employee going from before they ever even heard of your firm through the recruiting journey, through the onboarding journey, through their, their employee experience, and even exit? Uh, what does that journey look like through the employee's eyes? Not the firm sends out this email newsletter every week. No, I want to know, is anyone reading it? Is anyone even opening it? Like, does anyone even know that it's being sent? And, you know, like, or uh, will we give out these super awesome coffee mugs? Who says they're awesome? Your marketing person or the people that are at these recruiting fairs? Yeah. Like, and so through the employee's eyes, look at that journey and really dissect it and, and be like, you know, 
what are things that we do that are really great that people love? We should do some more of that through the journey. Mm-hmm. And what are things that we do that no one even knows? Well, how about you just stop? Like, you know, like, because it doesn't matter. And so it's really taking a moment to look at it through the employee's eyes because times have changed and the employees are in the driver's seat 100%. And so you have to value that what they value in the way that they value it. Yeah. And, and it's up to the employee to decide whether or not that's enough. It's almost like an eclipse where work eclipses who the employee is. That's time and energy that I'm not able to do things that light me up. And so compensation, if you think about it, it's kind of interesting because you work and you go in the hole and then I'll fill it in two weeks later when I pay you. Yeah. And then you work more and then I'll fill it in two weeks later. What if we paid people up front? What if we did it the other way around? Or what if uh, you know, we, we actually understood what is it that we're eclipsing and, and how can we fill in that hole? Because it doesn't have to be cash. It can be flexibility. It can be time off. It can be sending you to a workshop to do the, your and, those hobbies and passions that you'd love to do. There's all different ways that you can find a, a customized way to make people feel valued. And it's not valued for the work they're doing. It's valued for me as a human. Like, you know, if, if somebody asks me about going to concerts, it's like, wow, you know me, you get me. If there's somebody asks me about this macro that's on an Excel spreadsheet, well, whatever. Like you, you could ask anybody about that, yeah. you know? And, and so it's really just taking the time to, to value the person that works with you. It's the idea of differentiating as well. We've touched on this in a few different ways. A few years ago now, I did a TEDx talk called The Personal Brand of You. And in it, I gave an example of a red box. And I said to the audience, in this red box is all the things, that, sorry, it's a big gray box. All the things that you do is in this gray box. And I put a little red box in the corner. And I said, this is stuff in the red box. This is the stuff that your competitors cannot do. They yes. can't easily copy it. They can't replicate it, duplicate it, or claim it. Yes. So what goes into that red box? And what you're talking about here is your people, because your competitors can't duplicate your people. They can't claim exactly. to have your people and their relationships and their networks and their little yeah. sense of humors and their hobbies and their life experiences. That yeah. kind of stuff is not up for grabs because it's unique. And firms should play on that with their employer brand. Absolutely. hundred percent. And I, I agree totally because, but, but we, we completely ignore it. We don't even act like it's even there. Yeah. Like we ignore it all together. Why do we ignore it, John? Because we worked so hard to earn our degrees and we spent so much money on our technical skills and all this stuff. And that's and our we, identity, like, isn't it? Yeah, that's our identity. But, but it's the identity of the firm across the street. It's the identity of the firm down the street. It's the, firm, it's the identity of everyone else. Um, and, and we lean in on that and it's like, but that doesn't make you unique. It just means that you are able to be a firm. Like that's literally all it is. And so, you know, if, if we're able to just look at the humans and I loved how you said that, like that's your differentiator. Mm -hmm. And so double down on that and lean in on that and really just value the people in. And I also think too, in an accounting mindset, uh, it's money in good money out bad. And I do understand that if you're running a firm, you have to make payroll. Absolutely. But if you look at the long game, the cost of someone leaving your organization is two to three times their salary. And that's not just recruiting costs. It's the time that that chair is empty. It's the time that you now have to spend uh, as a partner to interview people. It's the time where other people that are in the department have to pull extra weight because that chair is empty. It's the time that that person has to get up to speed of the person that left. It's two to three times their salary. So if you look at uh, a client that treats your people poorly and you have a lot of turnover on that client, well, that client better be paying a lot because they're costing your organization a lot of money. But we don't look at it that way because we don't have to actually write the check at the end of the year for that cost. Um, But if you were to look at 
what actually costs you more, you would double down on your people every single time and not worry so much about clients. Mm -hmm. Because in this day and age, there are more clients than we know what to do with. So if you lose a client, no big deal. You'll get another one next week. If you lose a senior associate or a manager, wow, you're going to be losing some sleep over that for a long time yeah. because there's not a bench waiting to come in. So many good things here. I, I want to talk about culture for a moment, John. So many firms brag about the culture. One of, right. my, one of my side hustles, as well as running this podcast and a community of accounting influencers, is that I work with firms to interview their people to tell their stories about why that firm is a great place to work. Yeah. And, and they'll say, well, I love the culture here. And I'll say, well, what do you love about the culture? Well, they, they give us time to do what we like to do. Well, give me an example of that. Right. And that's when the stories come out. That's where it becomes real. Yeah. So in, in the John Garrett Dictionary of Life and Business, what does a good culture look like? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's one that meets people where they're at and really values the people that you have. Uh, and what are the skills that you can bring to the table that aren't on your resume or aren't from a college degree or certification? Uh, and what is it that lights you up? And, and how, how do we fit us around you instead of the old days where it's like, well, just be happy you have a job, shut your mouth and get to work. Now it's like, you know what? you're a new mom and you probably don't want to work 60 hour weeks or 40 hour weeks. Cool. What do you want to work? Cause we'll take it and we'll fit it around and great. Or it's, Hey, what do you love to do outside of work or what kind of clients, you know, would best suit your skill set? or, you know, and it's asking them a little bit more of what do you want? And then you're going to have people that stay longer and contribute more the value of an employee, the lifetime value curve goes higher and longer. And uh, then it just rubs off on other people then come and join your firm as well. Mm -hmm. Because so many people think that, well, you know, we have to just, you know, clients all the time, take care of the clients. And yeah, you do to an extent, but not at the extent where you just disregard your people. And so I, I think it's, it's, it's almost flipping it upside down where your people are the first, like care about your people that you have, and then you're going to get more and better people. And then from that, you'll get clients. Mm. But if you lose all of your people, you're going to lose all of your clients. <laughs> so how about we care about the people and then stuff will happen. Like good things come from that. That's a novelty there, caring about your people. So many firms claim to do that on their website, but what really does that look like? And, and you're right in, yeah. John, you talk about shining a light on your people's rich lives outside of work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's like you said earlier, that's your actual differentiator. That's your little red box. And if no one sees it, no one hears about it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the people that work there are going to think that it doesn't matter. They're going to think that it's a distraction or it takes away from my career or it's frowned upon or, and if you work at an organization that any of these things are happening, you are not in a good place. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's funny too, because there are lists that come out of best firms to work for. And I joke that it's like being the tallest midget. It doesn't mean you're good. Like it doesn't just because you're the best firm to work for. That's just in relation to what? And so be a good organization to work for, not just best firm to work for, be yeah. a good place to work and people will want to be there. And it's, it's really not that complicated, but it's, it's having to look at it from the long game perspective and having to just trust your people and care about your people. And then good things come from that. Well, we give some advice last time to end the show for the individuals on how they could weave their outside interests into their everyday life. And let's address a final message, John, to the leaders, to the managers, to the bosses, to the owners, to the managing partners sure. and the senior people in a firm to encourage a culture where people share it. And, and I'll throw in a couple of suggestions here. In that the most commonly asked question of a stranger is, how are you doing? How are right. you? How are things? How do you do, as we say in England? 
Yeah. Or what, and, what do you do? What's your, what's your job? Well, you know? no, that, that's actually the second. So what do you do right. is, is a question. The most common is how are you doing? How are things? Yeah. What's up? Kind of thing. Right. And yeah, most yeah. people give a nothing answer there. Nothing much. Super busy. I'm okay. In England, we say right. mustn't grumble. Not too bad because we're, we're very self-effacing. But what right. if the leaders set an example in that when they were asked that question, they said, you know, great. I had a wonderful weekend where I did this, or I had the chance last night to do this. And they start to bring those stories in yeah. so that by the time they bounce that question back and say to their employee, and, and how are you doing? They're going to get a different answer, aren't they? Absolutely. And it, or it's just even, uh, you know, I just really enjoy doing this. Uh, you know, just curious, what is it that you love doing? Yeah. Or I listened to this podcast with this crazy guy named John Garrett, who wrote this book called What's Your Hand? So what's your hand? You're a senior financial analyst. And what? Yeah. Like, who are you? Like, I'm, you know, this, you know, and, and share a little bit of yourself. And, and then you become a leader that people actually want to follow yes. instead of a leader that people have to follow. Um, you're, you, you, we, when you start out at an organization, you put based on the job title, you, people are scary. People are intimidating. And, and if you're listening to this as a leader, that's you no matter what, but if you humanize yourself and you go from, you know, partner in the corner office to no, no, it's Sherry. Just go talk to her. She's awesome. She loves dogs. Go ask her about her dogs. She'll, you know, and, and then that's great. Then you're, you're a human, you're a real person that, that has things. And, and it also gives you a chance to allow someone else to be the alpha. Uh, I had someone that I talked with that's a partner at a pretty big firm and he got a smoker, like a meat smoker. He had no clue what he was doing. And one of his staff was really, really good at it and grew up in, in the house that did this. And it wow. allowed him to say, hey, I have no clue what I'm doing. As a partner, you tell me as a staff how to do this well. Love and that. they could bond over that and relate over that. And, and I kind of look at it as, you know, you have like, you work at the same company or you have a connection, you work in the same department, you have a connection, maybe what school you went to, that's a higher level connection, but you really connect over that and those outside of work hobbies and passions and just humanize yourself and, and, and be more relatable. The message is coming out clearly for the leaders, John, to humble yourself, be a little bit vulnerable take a risk, open up the conversation, share something of your life outside work, be yeah. willing to be humbled by somebody that might know more about that than you do. Totally. And set the tone as a leader to say, hey, our culture talks about stuff that's not work and that's okay. Yeah, and it, not only is it okay, it's mandatory. There are some organizations where, you know, if, if on the intake form, what do you love to do outside of work? And if you got nothing, we're not interviewing you. Because that's not going to work around here. Yeah. Uh, and because we have people that have other things that light them up. Yeah. And, and that matters. John, you're engaged by professional firms all over the world for, I'm sure, conferences and, and away days and off-sites. And uh, to go in and, and get your head under the, the bonnet, if you like, and find out what's going on. Talk to us a little bit about your work with professional firms. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I was speaking a lot and, and still do. I've uh, been on stage over 2000 times now, which is pretty insane. And, uh, and it's, I realized that when my book came out that the speaking's great, but people don't know how to make it a, applicable where they work. Sure. Maybe they, they think about things a little bit differently, but they're not doing it on the regular. And so that's where I created some implementation program to kind of co-create with you uh, you know, a culture, let's build it. And, and, and from a leadership perspective, what's your legacy? Like what, what's your thumbprint that you're leaving on this organization and let's co-create it together and make it a place that not only you want to work, but so does everyone else. And, and like I said earlier, just because you're an accounting firm doesn't mean you have to act like one stop, mm -hmm. you know, just act like what you want to act like and you're going to attract people that way. And Presumably, you add some perspective because firms and leaders get so close to what they do, they can't see the answers, they can't see the wood from the trees, proximity bias and all that. So you go in and give them some perspective on what they're doing and show them things they can't see. Absolutely. That and then, you know, some ideas that I have that I think will work, but, but the co-creation comes in of, well, 
it might not work exactly the way I'm thinking, but you have an idea. I have an idea. Cool. Let's marry them together and let's see how that works. And yeah, it's because really big looking firms at are not the same as small firms, are they? In, in different cultures and environments. Or even cities. Um, you know, if you're yeah. a, a large regional firm or even a national firm, uh, you know, from one city to the next, totally different. Um, and then also that employee journey map. I think that's important to really break down. Uh, it really helps HR. It helps marketing. It helps leadership to understand like, oh, okay, yeah, we don't do any coaching formal conversations or we do it once a year. And it's like, well, that's not helpful to anybody. And so by the time somebody gets disgruntled and then they leave, well, it's time for your coaching conversation. It's like, well, too late, you know, like it's too late. And so, you know, people want to do, do good work and they do want to do that, but they also want to fit life first and then work around life. And so meet them where they're at and, or just be an organization that doesn't, but don't put on your about us page that you care about your people because you don't, <laughs> you know, you care about making money. That's what you care about. So put that right there in the headline. Let's right? be honest. Yeah. And given your background in public accounting, John, is that most of the area that you work or do you find yourselves in all kinds of different sectors? Well, the thing that I like uh, for me personally is I, I work in different industries. Right. So, you know, it is attorneys, it is engineering, it is IT and tech, it is architecture, it is finance, it is accounting, um, it, it is consulting. But that way then I don't get stuck in the, uh, in the, oh. the echo chamber, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so I bring in some fresh perspectives that help people not act like the accounting firm or not act like whatever kind of organization you are and be like, hey, what have you, have you thought about doing this? And like, well, that's crazy. No one does that. Exactly. That's why it's going to work. <laughs> so how about we do it now? Okay. Yeah. And then people are like, yeah, let's give it a try. Yeah. And then, and then it makes you different. John, leave the leaders listening and we're all leaders in a way, aren't we? We're all influencers. Absolutely. They say even the most introverted person will influence 10,000 people in their lifetime. So Leave us with the, a call to arms or some words of encouragement that we can set a better example for people to integrate the personal with the business to everyone's advantage. What would you say to them? Yeah, I would say that, you know, your organization is full of really cool, amazing people that have talents above and beyond their degrees and certifications. And so really lean into that. Uh, scratch a little bit below the surface and find out what it is that lights people up and value the worker just as much as you value that work. Amazing. John Garrett, it's been a privilege speaking to you today. Thank you so much for your time and your insights. Thanks, Rob.